Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. We are following two breaking news stories, including a fire that tears through a Westland apartment complex, leaving many families homeless. Well, we start with a lockdown at Beaumont Dearborn after a shootout and chase through several Metro Detroit communities ends with a man shot and another committing suicide in the hospital parking lot. Topping our news tonight at 11, Dearborn police say this started as an argument between two men in Melvindale and then it went on the road. From Melvindale, it spilled into Allen Park with both men chasing and shooting at each other until one of them realized he was hurt and headed toward the hospital. That's where Mara McDonald is live tonight. Uh, so Mara, the lockdown has been lifted now. If you have to get into Beaumont Dearborn, are you able to now? Kimberly, let me set it up for you. First of all, take a look behind me. You're still going to see a heavy police presence at this hospital. But Chief Haddad says if you have patients, if you have family that you need to see at this hospital, you can get in and inside the building, it is business as usual. It started as a fight in Melvindale between two men, what police are describing as an old boyfriend versus the new boyfriend. The old boyfriend had weapons, started firing at the new boyfriend. A chase ensued, multiple shots fired. It turned into a driving gun battle. The new boyfriend was injured and started heading toward Beaumont Dearborn with the old boyfriend still in hot pursuit and still shooting. They both roll onto the hospital campus here. I just seen like cops just swarming the whole place and shutting off like all the exits and everything. The new boyfriend ran to get help in the hospital. The old boyfriend committed suicide here in the parking lot. The gun battle never entered the hospital proper and Chief Haddad says it's because his people were in position. A saving grace tonight, we have a consolidated dispatch that allowed us to consolidate all this information between Melvindale, Allen Park, and our city, and it probably, not probably, it did in fact uh, allow us to respond at a much quicker speed and save a lot of lives tonight. Back here live, still an active police scene here at Beaumont Dearborn, but once again, the chief telling us that the lockdown here at the hospital has been lifted. We are live in Dearborn tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, we are also following breaking news in Westland where several families are without a home tonight after fire rips through an apartment complex. This near Joy and Newburgh. Jermont Terry is at the scene where firefighters have been battling the fire all night. Jermont. Yeah, Devin, and here we are in the fifth hour. Fire crews are still out here. You can see the ladder trucks are out. They're dealing with many of the hot spots. I don't know if we can zoom in, but you might be able to see that the roof to this entire building, it is collapsed, and it is believed that this one unit, this entire unit, is destroyed. I'm just looking at the smoke, man. It's terrible. Clouds of thick darkness poured over Joy Road near Newburgh in Westland. Smoke. <laughs> That's all I saw. It was a whole lot of black smoke. All of it came from one building at the Westland Village apartment complex. But the flames were just as intense. Everyone inside at the time got out safely. Many stood by in disbelief as fire crews tried their best to get this fire under control. Why well, it's been going on for two or three hours and it's still not going out. It come, goes out, comes back. So the fire moved into the attic, making it difficult. Levon Fuller watched her building burn. Thankfully, she wasn't home. I mean, my aunt, she told me, she's like, the house is on fire, so I was like, oh my God. There are at least 24 families displaced by this fire, and while the devastation is setting in, there's one thing these tenants are pleased to know. I'm just glad everybody got out safe, and it's just devastating to see this. Oh, that stuff could be replaced. You know, there's nothing I could do about it. And one interesting note, this apartment complex requires that all of their tenants have rentals ins rental insurance. So that's one positive out of all of this. Now, an interesting fact, we talked, we heard that there's one couple that lived in this building. They moved in just yesterday and the fire happened today. So they're also dealing with this loss as well. For now, reporting live in Westland, Jermont Terry, Local 4. It's terrible. All right, Jermont. All right, turning now to weather and Ben, we just had a warning to pop up in our area. Again, it's the uh, northwest corner of Livingston County and you can see it right there with the uh, orange shading. Uh, that is the severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect until midnight tonight. It's a line of thunderstorms which has been teetering on the border of being severe all night and that's where the storm is right now. We're 
particularly concerned about that little notch that may be trying to form in the middle of that storm. We're going to be watching that pretty intensely, but you can see there's definitely a lot of heavy rain and lightning with this, but the primary threat, the reason the warning was issued is because of the winds possibly up to 60 miles an hour. Monday in Flint, you're going to be getting this at about the quarter hour here, 1114, 1117, Cahocta, uh, just in the next few minutes. That storm is going to roll into your neighborhood. It's a big line. It's going to be wet and it's going to be loud as it rolls through, so we'll see if this continues to be severe as it marches through southeast Michigan over the next couple hours. Guys. Hey, Ben. Ford Motor Company will be temporarily stopping its F-150 production after its second shift tonight. It's due to a lack of supplies after a fire broke out last week at a supplier. The F-150 is the U.S.'s largest selling truck. Ford depends on the truck for a quarter of its profits. Line workers will still get paid, but at a reduced rate. It's unknown how long the production halt will last. Three people killed in the chain reaction crash in Van Buren Township were identified to us today. 39-year-old Naomi Usselman of Canton and her 13-year-old son Dominic were inside one of the cars when it crashed and became engulfed in flames. Police say the crash caused a chain reaction involving, in the end, six vehicles. And that's 44-year-old Robert Dolan III, who was in his car with his 10-year-old son during the accident. Dolan's son said his father is his hero. He died protecting Shane. And um, if it wasn't for him, Shane wouldn't be here. I, I seen that car. I seen that truck. Mm -hmm. And he, he died being a hero. And I asked Shane, does he want me to tell you all anything? He just said, tell everybody my daddy is my hero. Police believe speed may have been a factor in the crash. A family's dog is stolen out of their yard and used as bait for a dog fighting ring. Nine year old LB, an American and French bulldog mix, was taken over the weekend from a home in Detroit's Boston Edison neighborhood. The family launched a widespread search, but he wasn't found until today when he was dropped uh, or dumped and left on the side of the road near the Anti Cruelty Society. He has severe injuries all over his body, and he's only being given a 50 50 chance of surviving and said that he's in very bad shape. They didn't know if he had, I mean, he had just entered. Uh, they didn't know if he had been hit by a car or what had happened. My husband and I just jumped everything, drove to the shelter to find out that he had been, in fact, uh, been used as bait. Neighbors say LB was taken from two men in a white pickup truck that was towing a blue dumpster on wheels. The Anti-Cruelty Society says that same pickup truck has been spotted taking other dogs in the city as well. Investigators in Macomb County say they have found evidence connected to convicted killer Arthur Ream as the search for possible bodies continues. They are not saying what that evidence is, but they say they are cautiously optimistic that remains are going to be found. Authorities found the evidence in the same area where the remains of Cindy Zarzicki were found. Now, no human remains have been found in this new search yet, but the police say there is probable cause to believe the site is a graveyard. They believe four to six bodies could be buried in that area. Community members in Madison Heights gathered tonight to show support for the president of Bishop Foley High School. Last month, Father Gerard LaBeouf was uh, removed from his position after an allegation of inappropriate behavior was made against him by an adult student. Supporters say they want to show Father LaBeouf that the community is behind him. The Archdiocese of Detroit says they're cooperating with Madison Heights police during the ongoing investigation. A trio of porch pirates are captured on surveillance video on Detroit's east side. You can see two women and one man come up to the front door at a home near Shaner and East State Fair. Each one of them grabs a package and then takes off. The woman who lives there says one of the packages was for her grandmother. Anyone with information is urged to contact Detroit police. The Republicans running for governor have made their cases to voters in their first debate tonight. Four candidates touching on nearly a dozen issues. Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly and Attorney General Bill Schuette sparred over the Flint water crisis. I want to be, make it very clear that the Flint water crisis has been politicized. The Attorney General has used it as though it is some kind of launching pad for a campaign for governor. The people of the, of the city of Flint deserve to have an investigation that is apart from politics. And the crisis of, uh, in Flint is all about accountability and justice. You know, 12 people died. 12 people died in Flint. Kids were poisoned. And to think with arrogance you could try to sweep it under the rug and pretend it didn't happen, some another uh, rounding error in the fatalities of the challenges of a big city like Flint is the height of arrogance. 
Candidates also addressed recreational marijuana, which we expect to be on the ballot in November, no-fault insurance, and school safety. I'd urge you to watch the debate in its entirety on ClickOnDetroit.com. And remember, the next debate for the Republicans will be right here in our studios coming up the evening of June 28th. The FBI is investigating after a radiological substance was found at Detroit Metro Airport. The discovery was made yesterday morning near gate A-74 in the McNamara terminal. It's unknown whether the substance was for medical use. We'll keep you updated when more information becomes available. A warning tonight about the dangers of third-hand smoke. How outdoor smoke breaks may be putting others at risk in the office. Also, most people around didn't even know anything was wrong, but new video uncovers a man trying to kidnap a toddler outside a supermarket. That's coming up too. Karen? Living on the streets, hungry, alone, victims of crime. They think in this love and it's not. They, they are being trafficked and they're being abused. Someone is out here too, working to give them a second chance. See how? Coming up next.